If you're familiar with Wales, you may have noticed that there's a huge diversity in Christian chapels that people attend. Even the smallest community of a few hundred people might have many different places of worship. We can look at the parish of Llandysil in Cardiganshire as an example. By the mid-1800s, there were already nine chapels and meeting houses in addition to the Anglican Church. So we have the Anglican Parish Church, Ebenezer Baptist Chapel, Llynhryd Owen Presbyterian Chapel, Pante Devide Unitarian Chapel, there was also John Thomas's Unitarian Schoolroom, Carmel Independent Chapel, Horeb Congregational Chapel, Tabernacle Calvinistic Methodist Chapel, the Wesleyan Chapel, Peniel Wesleyan Chapel, Bethel Wesleyan Chapel, and even more chapels have been built since that time, like Sion Chapel in 1871. But even by 1851, the total population of Llandysil was only about 2,930, meaning that there was one place of worship for every 300 or so people. The vast majority were attending the nonconformist chapels of various denominations, rather than the Anglican Church that only saw 200 to 300 people every Sunday. So what's with these chapels? And what was religious life like for our nonconformist ancestors? If you're interested in this topic, Welsh history, genealogy in general, or if you learn anything from this video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that YouTube lets you know when the next video comes out. Subscriptions, comments, likes, and shares do a lot to help me continue to do this work. Now let's get into it. The origin of these nonconformist chapels takes us back to the Protestant Reformation, starting in the early 1500s, when new forms of Christianity began to develop in opposition to the Catholic Church. This is the legacy of the many chapels you find throughout Wales. Throughout Britain, these denominations came to be known legally as nonconformist or dissenting in the 1660s. They were Protestants who didn't follow the Anglican Church. Especially in the early years, their preachers and congregations experienced different forms of legal and social persecution. However, by the mid-1800s, the nonconformists made up the majority of the Welsh population and became a significant social and political force themselves. The early nonconformists in Wales were largely Congregational Baptists, but the denominations quickly diversified based on their different interpretations of the Bible. So, when you hear nonconformists, it's normally referring to the Baptists, independents, Congregationalists, the Wesleyan Methodists, and the Calvinistic Methodists. As I said, by 1851, far more people in Wales were members of nonconformist denominations than of the Anglican Church. At that point, about 20% of the population was Anglican. Calvinistic Methodists consisted of 25.7%, Independents, 21.8%, Baptists, 17.4%, Wesleyan Methodists, 12.4%, and then other religions accounted for about 2.6%. I want to highlight Calvinistic Methodism here because it actually originated in Wales during the Welsh Methodist Revival of the 1700s. Early preachers like Howell Harris of Talgarth in Breckenshire, the Reverend Daniel Rollins of Llangaitho, Cardiganshire, the Reverend Griffith Jones of Llandauror, Carmarthenshire, and his patron, Bridget Bevan, combined creating circulating schools, teaching the scriptures in Welsh, traveling parish to parish, and giving emotionally intense sermons to grasp the people's attention. This form of Methodism was Calvinistic in that they took on the philosophy of the theologian John Calvin rather than of John Wesley, as did the Wesleyan Methodists. Some of the core beliefs of Calvinistic Methodism include a belief in original sin, 
the inherent depravity of mankind, free justification through an acknowledgement of Christ's sacrifice, effectual grace in regeneration, the everlasting happiness of the righteous, and eternal punishment of the wicked. According to the Reverend William Williams, it was the balance of preaching religious law, sin, and punishment, together with preaching the saving grace of Jesus Christ, that brought such success to these preachers, that brought people into their congregations and into these intense collective moments of shouting, jumping, and trembling in religious worship. So let's talk about these preachers. In nonconformist chapels, the preacher generally preached on a circuit. They traveled between chapels or meeting houses, and sometimes across different parishes to meet with their different congregations. Someone like the Reverend Christmas Evans, sometimes referred to as one of Britain's greatest Baptist preachers, was known for his traveling across the entirety of Wales. Other preachers had smaller, more regular circuits, like the 18th century Wesleyan Methodist minister, the Reverend Timothy Davis of Velindra Pencarig in Carmarthenshire. A lot of my Cardiganshire ancestors were members of his congregation because he preached at a number of chapels across different parishes in that county. Abermeirig Chapel in Nantcunle, Llyn Pio Chapel in Llangaitho, Kilgwyn Chapel in Llangibi, and Caironin Chapel in Kellan. So his work regularly took him across five different parishes, including his home parish. Now I've been saying a lot of Welsh words in this video, and in the past I've gotten a lot of unhelpful comments about my pronunciation. If you're the person getting ready to write an unhelpful comment about my pronunciation, why not instead click over to my Patreon, which is linked in the description, fill out your information, and sign up for a small regular payment. Once I reach about $20 a month, I'll be dedicating some of that money to taking online Welsh classes. So, help me make these videos more enjoyable for you. Now back to it. The fact that these preachers traveled across parishes as early as the 17th century is really unusual. As I've mentioned in previous videos, people were often tied to and emotionally invested in their own parish. Local xenophobia, which created rivalries across parish boundaries, generally prevented people from moving around much, but these nonconformist preachers did so regularly, and especially their early experiences were tinged with that local xenophobic violence. The circuit system was different from the Anglican system, where a reverend was assigned to a single parish to minister to all of the Anglican parishioners. The person who arrived in the parish as a vicar often was out of the hands of those Anglican parishioners, but for the traveling nonconformist minister, their congregations had a bit more power to choose where they worshipped and who they followed. Because of that, the nonconformist ministers had to develop highly charismatic personalities to gain a celebrity-like status, and they used that to attract new followers. In fact, a whole industry developed around their celebrity. Memorabilia like sermon pamphlets, biographies, and minister portraits were often kept in people's homes and sold in the thousands. Like the preachers themselves, the members of the congregation also had to travel to follow the ministers who called to them, often traveling outside their own parish to attend sermons, marry, baptize their children, and bury their loved ones. One of the general features of nonconformity that appealed to people comes from a core ideal of the Protestant Reformation. Ministry should be done in the vernacular language. So in this case, it was done in Welsh, in the same way that the Church of England, which was also a product of the Reformation, held services in English. Before the Reformation, religious service was normally done in Latin. So the chapels were able to engage with people in the language that most of the population spoke throughout their daily lives. 
The chapels also played an important role in fostering literacy in Welsh and providing education to children through the Sunday schools in places where there was otherwise little access to schooling. For these congregations, the chapel was a central feature of their social lives. For many, being a member of the chapel meant attending services three times a week. With all that time spent together, the congregation acted like a support network. This wasn't just a place of moral or religious support, but also a place where people could make social connections, where they could accumulate and distribute resources, and organize politically, normally in support of a liberal political candidate. The regular everyday hierarchies still played out in the chapels. In rural communities, the chapel leadership rested in the hands of the farming middle class rather than with the agricultural laborers. And then in urban areas, it was the craftspeople and shop owners who often led religious life. Overall, there was this sense that nonconformity was associated with the farming and tradespeople class the Welsh language, and liberalism. And then on the other hand, that the Anglican Church was associated with conservatism, English, and the traditional aristocracy. These relationships have played an important role in the history of Wales and in the lives of our ancestors. And one thing that's undeniable is that the nonconformist chapels offered an appealing alternative to the beliefs forms of worship, and social organization around the Anglican Church. And that's Welsh chapels explained. Definitely share in the comments anything you know about religious nonconformity, or if you know about any of the chapels that your ancestors might have attended. If you'd like to see more genealogy or Welsh history videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to support this channel or get access to exclusive content, check out the Patreon and join the newsletter. You can also follow us on most platforms just by searching Genial Cymru.